Hello and welcome to the introduction of the new StageTex IP console Avatos. My name is Christian Fuchs. I'm sound engineer and uh, product manager for this mixing desk uh, coming from StageTech in Berlin. Uh, I'll introduce you to the main hardware setup of the console, uh, workflow, how to select uh, functions, how to operate certain things. And I hope you will enjoy the video. The Avatu surface is a totally IP-based surface. Each module has got its own IP address. Uh, it's fully TCP IP compatible, so you can run the system in a managed TCP IP network. The two screens that you see are both touch screens. So the upper screen as well as the lower screen can be operated via touch. Each block of 12 faders has got um, double encoder modules for double encoder per strip. They are color coded and the color is telling about the function these buttons are operating. The fader module has color-coded fader knobs as well. The color coding of the faders is telling us the channel type if we have an input channel, an auxiliary master, a group master, a matrix out. Starting with the encoders up here, um, what we see now is a so-called customized strip where we have a selection of four really important functions that are usually needed for every channel as the first steps we operate. So yellow is standing for the input section. So on the yellow encoder we have the input gain. On the green encoder in this case we have the low cut for the equalizer. On the blue encoder pair we have uh, threshold and ratio for the compressor and on the orange encoder we have the pan settings. So with this custom strip you have fast access to the mainly important parameters you more or less need to touch as one of the first things in every channel. To change the selection of these double encoders, there are a few modes how to do that. On the right hand side there's a navigation bar with the functions so I can select all strips to be now equalizer on the encoders or to be pan or to have the auxiliaries or my input section. And as you see, the encoders are following with the color coding. As soon as you touch an encoder, in the meter screen, there's a pop-up window showing you the parameters you are setting with the encoders. Above that pop-up screen, there is the EQ graph visible as a small graphic to give you an image about settings that you just made. And there's a second graph always showing the pan position of this channel. Another selection for the console is to switch functions just per block. So I can change the mode in the navigation bar and switch one block to pan and the other block to compressor for instance. On top of that, I can even change selections via a drop-down menu to have individual function selection per channel on the strip. On the lower touch screen, the strip view is always following the, set, uh, the selection for the encoders. 
So if I change this one to auxiliary, not just the encoders, also the strip view is changing to auxiliary. These strips always give me uh, a fast access to certain button functions to select certain things. Uh, in this thing with the auxiliary now, I can scroll through my auxiliary list. So if I select a certain auxiliary, in this case auxiliary 7, I have mute pre-post button, a button to set the aux sense to zero fader. In the EQ screen strip, I have buttons to turn the EQ on off to set an EQ linear by holding down the linear button for two seconds. So each strip is always following uh, the selection for the encoders and giving me the most important buttons and encoder views right under my hand. To go into more detailed settings for these audio modules, you can hold down the name of the module and you will be guided to the detail view. In this case, we have the detail view of the equalizer. Uh, again, in each detail view on the left side, we have these encoder modules visible and the selection here is always mapping the encoders in the channel strip. There are, in this case, 10 bands in the equalizer for peak filters, a high shelf, a low shelf, two notch filters, a high cut and a low cut. You can operate in the detail view by selecting a bar graph, by sliding, by using plus minus buttons to do fine settings on a parameter and of course, with the handles, you can change settings for an equalizer. For instance, gain frequency. And a special thing, there's a shadow around each handle. And on the shadow with one finger, in this case, I operate the Q. There are buttons to linear bypass the single filters. There's a lock gain function, so now I just can change frequency and Q. There's also a lock frequency button, and now only Q can be changed in this graph. Equalizer modules and dynamic modules do have a memory function. So once you have done some equalizer settings, you can save them into a memory page and then you do some other changes and with the memory button you can toggle between the two settings of an equalizer. Both settings are carried through channel libraries, through queue automation, so uh, each channel has got two separate settings for equalizer and the dynamic modules. Another example for detail view is compressor. Again, I have different ways to change to the compressor now. For example, here's a pull down menu again, and I can change to my compressor view. Again, we have the arc indicators here, which are mapping the encoders again. I can turn on the compressor, set threshold, ratio, and output gain, markup gain for the compressor in this bar graph. All other parameters can be changed from the arc indicators or from the encoders. Uh, coming up with software 116 in November 2020, there's parallel compression mode 
available in each channel. By holding down that New York compressor button for two seconds, you switch the compressor mode to become a parallel compressor. In the graph, in the channel meter, there's also with a NY shown that this compressor is in parallel compression mode now. The output gain from the compressor is changing its, its function then to be the wet-dry value to be set as needed. You also have a channel overview. Uh, so for your selected channel, you can get an overview about your input settings, about your settings of dynamic units. You see the routing where the channel is going to. In the channel view, you also find the channel fader, mute button, isolate button, auto mix button, which you also have on the fader module in any way. From the channel view, just by touching a certain module, you change into that detail view for the module. In this case, we see the input section of a channel with a plus minus 60 dB gain. Uh, settings for different stereo modes. You can toggle between two different inputs. You can also do a summing of the input A and B from that channel. You have generator activation, polarity switch, and so on. In each of these detail views, the top row is giving us some information. Uh, in the first field, we see the original channel number the name we have given the channel. We see the source from the Nexus IOs that is patched to this channel. Here we have a pull down menu to do a quick change of VCA assign for that channel. We also have a pull down menu to do a quick change of link group assign for that channel. And the last drop-down menu is the one where we can just change to different detail views of different modules from that channel. If we go, wanted to go back to the strip view, we just hit this fader icon in the top right corner. Another way to toggle between detail view or strip view is the access button in your fader module. Uh, Avatus is carrying a two user operability. So uh, you can divide a surface into two virtual surfaces. Um, here we see my 24 fader test system, so which is um, a small version. So in blocks of 12 faders, uh, Avatus can be scaled up to 96 faders. It can be in one frame, it can be two or three frames to be handled as one console. And at any time you can divide your total amount of, of fader base into two user areas which is changing a bunch of things. As I showed at the beginning, I can switch functions from the navigation bar on the right side for the entire console or per block. If I change my user settings, in this case I say user one, is the first fader bay and user two is the second fader bay. If I change module selection now, globally, you see it just happens for the user where I change this setting. The same on the side for user two. Um, this is not only about um, Module selection, it's also about functions like 
uh, an auxiliary fader flip. So if I'm as a user A want to do aux sense on fader for auxiliary 5, I can do that without affecting user 2 with that. That this block is now in aux to fader mode is shown by the red background at the channel names. So if I leave that mode, we have a black background for the channel names. If I enter that mode, background is telling me these faders are not any longer channel faders. They are operating now auxiliaries. At the same time, I could go to auxiliary 8 in this bay to do aux to fader settings. Uh, another user one two thing is that your global switching through fader banks is also divided into the two sections, user one, user two. You have two PF PFL buses, two solo buses, which are routed to separate control rooms so each user can do PFL and solo functionality uh, without affecting the other user. Uh, also temporary functions like a temporary link or a spill functionality are individually for users. The temp link function is a pretty easy and fast one. You hold down an access button, you press another access button and this row of faders is now temporarily linked to each other. The existing offsets are kept. What you can also see in this case for the equalizers and whenever I do now a change on one of the channels all the others will follow. Uh, pretty unique function on a stage tech console is a touch offset. So if I want to have an Another offset for these two channels, even so they are linked now with the others, I just touch both channels, do a change, and when I keep operating just one of the channels, the new offset is kept over the entire range. This offset function works uh, for all DB-related parameters and frequencies. Uh, it's not only in temporary link groups, a, this touch offset function is also for stereos 5.1 uh, and all other link groups implemented in the console. To release a temporary link, you just hit an access button again. So if I want to set for all these channels, let's say for my percussion channels here just a low cut I select my I set a temporary link group I do a low cut in one of the channels I release a link group and it's done in the same way I can do a very fast routing to groups and sums either through the bus routing list in the strip view or with a touch function in the meter screen. If I want to use, if I don't want to use that up there, I can bring down the meter screen to the lower touch screen and do the operation as well from down here. Talking about bringing down the meter view here, there's a hardware option to have no upper screens on the console. If your front of house position, for instance, is uh, on a very step bleachers and you hardly can see the stage from your front of house position, you could refrain from the upper screens at all, or they could even be taken off as a hardware option to be mounted like a cockpit situation or to be mounted left and right from your console, depending on your needs. Going back to detail view, 
Um, you have a channel configuration for each in and output channel where you can freely uh, rearrange the order of processing. So in this case for my piano, I just could drag my delay and move it post fader. Uh, I could take the deesser to have it post EQ. Um, I even my trap for the PFL, I could set right post gain. In that case, of course, I wouldn't hear any of my audio processing in the channel. So that can be done for single channels. You can copy that to all channels of that type uh, or do it individually per channel. Copy function can be reached from every detail view and the channel view. So in this case, I would copy now from piano because that's my selected channel here. I select the functions. I want to use either the entire channel or I say VCA assign direct out fader input gain and pan. Then I select the destination channels and confirm it with OK, copy done. There are a few ways of labeling channels. If you just want to label a channel very quick, like on the acoustic bus, uh, I want to change the label. I do a long press on the channel label. A keyboard is opening. You also can use a USB keyboard connected to the console. And instead of acoustic bass, I rename it to upright bass. And with enter, I leave the label mode again. To do labeling at the beginning of setting up your show, there's an overview page for channel labels. Also by a long press function, you can enter the mode and change names. And with the enter button, you just can go step by step through the list. By the end of 2020, there will be a label library added, which is not related to your show files, which will be a global label library. So where you then also can easily uh, name channels with your favorite labels that you have in your personal label library. If we leave our menu with the channel labels overview, we are leaded back to the last detail view or to the channel view, depending on where we were coming from. If we go back to the strip view and select the function group control groups, we have access to our VCA assign. If I scroll the list of my 30 VCAs, you can see all strips are following. So VCA groups are always mapping in the row. I have a nice overview where are the channels assigned to. You can do assigning to multiple VCA masters. So in this case, I decided to have an orchestra VCA grandmaster and a sub VCA for my percussion for drum and bass and so on. Link groups uh, at stage tech are behaving in also in a kind of a unique way. You have 32 link groups and you can assign any combination of channels to these link groups. For instance, I have assigned Violin 1 to a link group. I also named the link group Violin 1. So whenever I do a change on one of the seven violins here, all the others are following. The same behavior than on a temporary link group, I can do offsets by touching two faders and these offsets are kept. This is also working for all other link parameters. 
to change the settings which is linked to each other and which link group, we go to the detail view. And for my link group violin one, I can now deselect or select certain functions to be linked to each other. The selection for another link group, in this case violin two link group, can be different again. So each of the 32 link groups can have an individual selection which parameters should be linked in this group. The meter screen is giving us uh, a bunch of information. We already saw the bus routing overview, we saw the mini graphs about pen, EQ, compression. We see the channel name that we've given the channel. Below that channel name we see the original input source from the Nexus audio network coming into that channel. We have peak meters for each channel and beside the peak meter we have four gain reduction meters showing always the gain reduction for compressor limiter expander gate and deesser. So let's change to layer where we have some, some level on the channels right now. So you see here pretty nice now compressors working on the channels so you always have an overview uh, in each strip what's up in your dynamic sections, how are they working. Uh, you see, in, on the top you see the strip number of, on the surface. Uh, you see to which of the up to eight auto mixer uh, this channel is belonging. If the channel is active on the auto mixer, you get a blue icon on the auto mixer label. So you also see pretty nice uh, that these four channels are running in auto mixer right now. By touching the meter you can change meter settings for all channels of that type or you change it individually per strip or per channel. For meter settings, there are of course functions like peak hold, peak memory, auto reset, and so on. So back to the channel view or any of the detail views, you can change the channel you want to see and operate in this screen or in the strip you have right now in excess. So by just tapping on the channel name, a list is opening and I can select any other channel in the console. So now I have my tenor saxophone one and the entire strip in the console is temporary, showing me now tenor saxophone one and I can access any of the functions. I can move into equalization for that channel and whenever I want I go to another channel clarinet one I get that one straight in excess and to show me it's temporary assigned the channel meter gets a red background just to make sure that I know this is not the original channel on this fader bay right now. So as soon I leave the detail view there will be the original channel in the strip back to the surface. And this function offers you the possibility if you prepare, prefer to work with a um, central area of operation, you could design to go for your detail view or your channel view and just with selecting different channels you can operate every channel from this position uh, like make sure you always stay in the sweet spot on large-scale consoles uh, when operating. 
uh, or that you just don't have to leave the area, change to another fader bank, and so on. So at, at any position on the console, you have access to every channel with all its settings at any time. On the right navigation bar, there is on the lower end a button control room, which opens up the control room section from Avatus. There are two fully equipped control rooms, one and two. You can toggle between the operation of both control rooms. Um, by logic, control room one is assigned to user one, control room two to user two. Uh, you have, of course, settings for your level. You have a mute button for the entire control room for single channels of the control room. Each of the control room can be up to 5.1.4 format. Also, the pen mode of the console, so the bus types of the consoles, can be any format up to 5.1.4. To select uh, a source for the control room, I just open up my list, which are, of course, all my consoles output channels, but which also can be certain IOs or inputs in that case from my Nexus audio network to listen directly to an input from Nexus. So by selecting the list, I just can change. You see it up here above the control room. I can change my selection, what the control room should deliver. You have the option to get your PFL and your solo bus or your solo bus to the control room automatically or not. Uh, PFL and solo bus are also available in the I.O. routing to feed those uh, buses to separate speakers if you don't want to hear especially your PFL on your main control room monitor. You have an alternate button in each control room that gives you the chance to toggle between two sets of control room monitors, uh, like a large scale and, and a near field monitor. You have the typical functions, polarity, mono listen, uh, side swap, and so on for the control room. On top of the two main control rooms, you also have four stereo control rooms available in Avatus which can be used for your stage manager, uh, for your musical director, uh, and so on. You can assign, like the auxiliary mix for your musical director, you assign to this control room. And from here you can talk straight into that control room to communicate with your musical director. Uh, for instance, each of the two control rooms has its own talk channel. So, um, with the local microphone or with any other microphone on a Nexus input, you can run this talk channel for your uh, internal communication straight into mixing buses and also for external communication to external intercom systems or to simple four-wire applications like shout boxes between front of house and monitor application. And one of the top buttons in the right side pick list is called system. In that menu we find a bunch of certain settings that we usually don't touch so many times after we are done with setting up a show. So the first entry in the system menu is our layer assign, so where we assign audio channels to the strips of the consoles. Avatus has got 16 user layers, uh, which can be assigned individually as you prefer it uh, or as you need it. In the top row, you can select the layer you want to assign, and there's a bank a128 and a bank B128. Uh, the eight layers of bank B 
are saved and can be recalled individually with snapshots. In the central screen of the layer assign, in the top row, we find all our DSP channels. They can be filtered with the buttons input group, some auxiliary, track bus, and so on. In the bottom row, we see the up to eight blocks of a logic Avato surface. So in this case, there's only the left hand block selected. I can select more blocks to be shown in my assign and I can assign it. Even so, I just run a 24 fader console. At any time, I can do layer assign for up to 96 faders. In this show file, I can carry it to any other console and work with this show file on that console. If we go to the I.O. routing, uh, we find all Nexus I.O.s and all console I.O.s in an X.Y. matrix. And in the left blocks, we have filter buttons. So in default, you see all incoming signals from Nexus and your destinations are in the default console inputs, the input a. In this list, there are filter button. I can filter by type, like show me all AES inputs or show me microphone inputs. I can also use my user settings to filter lists, to, to filter certain in and outputs to make a better overview. So, I made up, for instance, mic split A with eight microphone inputs in it, so my source list is already pretty small. In general, to set cross points, I can prepare those. And the yellow dot means they are just prepared and not set yet. And with the set button, I can do the patching. There's also a direct mode, which means the cross point is set it immediately, so that also means I maybe steal an existing cross point the moment I do the setting. To do a quick and easy routing, there's a one by one button. So if I want to feed my 128 channels from a multi track machine, uh, into channels, I select that multi-track machine and I say, okay, I want to start on that channel. I get a one by one row. If I don't need all channels, I could say up to here. I say set and I'm done with the routing for my multi-track machine in that case. Um, if I want to send things from the console out to the Nexus, I select console as my sources and I select Nexus as my destinations. So I could say, uh, show me my auxiliary outputs and I want to send an auxiliary into my reverb. Again, here I'm using a filter list that I made up so that I don't see all of my AES outputs in a system. All cross points, all settings from Nexus IOs, also from Nexus DSP parameters like 30 band equalizers, delays, and stuff, uh, are stored with your Avatus show file uh, so you don't have to handle extra patch libraries and stuff to load these things. Uh, coming to the queue list, we have a main view. In this case, we see I already have made up a bunch of queues. Uh, the queue that is with a colored background is the active loaded. The white arrow on the left side is a selector. So now I've selected queue number six, Lupo, to be loaded with the go button. I will load that queue. If I have set in my 
queue settings that layers should be recalled, they will be recalled. So if we have a look on the fader module, as soon as I load the queue, the fader bank is switching to my pre-selected fader bay for that queue. Uh, each queue has a pre and a post wait time. The snapshot itself is in between pre and post wait. Here we see an icon in the queue list that a layer, will, a layer assigned will be loaded with the queue. With the edit button, we come to the detailed settings for a queue. It starts with arming, disarming a queue. I can set links like auto follow, auto continue. You have eight colors to, uh, for your choice to select a color for your queue. So you could uh, make up cues that blue is always music, green is dialogue, red is sound effects, and so on. And here's the button layer options, uh, which gives me the chance to do a selection which layer in which bank should be loaded with a queue, or I can also say don't load layers at all with a queue. Uh, here's a pretty small overview list for triggers and events. If I want to add a trigger to a queue, so for instance, um, an incoming time code should trigger this queue number seven. I say I want to add a new time code trigger. I um, give it a name. And then I type in the time code and I clone it to the library and with that cloning it also comes into the queue list. If we go back to the main view, we see in this queue that it will be triggered with a time code. In the same way, manner I can add for instance, a MIDI event to a queue. I go to new MIDI event. I can set a MIDI channel or go for the preset device channel. Uh, after selecting the type of MIDI command, which are all musical MIDI commands and sysx commands, I define the, the value that I want to use for that MIDI command. And I say clone again, and the MIDI command is added as an event to my queue. Uh, events will be fired out uh, with the queue after the post wait time we have set it. For all events, there's a test button so in this example, I can just send out this MIDI command without loading the entire queue, just to check if the MIDI command is correct and, or at least ending up on the right destination. If we go to the menu fade, we can set separate fade curves and fade types per channel per queue. In the top row, we see now we are editing fade times and curves for queue number six, Lupo again. Um, it's a matrix. If I go to the bottom line, I change the fade type for all channels. If I do that inside the matrix, I can do it individually per channel or per link group. The same for time, I can change the time per channel. I can select a bunch of channels. So let's say we change that to 10 seconds. So now only the selected channels are changed to 10 seconds. If I want to do changes for all channels, I have an all button to select them all and can change fade types and curves for all of them. Then we have a recall scope. By default, every 
parameter is load, stored and loaded with a queue. Uh, also here we have a matrix. So I could deselect, for instance, limiter and compressor, mute group and pen in my recall scope and update it into the snapshot. I also can select or deselect entire channels or channel groups from that matrix to have my individual settings for recalling a queue. Apart from standard queues, you also can create an event queue, which is finally a new queue without a snapshot. So if you need in your show uh, a queue which is mainly to fire some extra MIDI commands or other events without changing anything in the console, you just define to have an event queue uh, just to do external things and not affect anything in the console with a queue like that. In the project preferences, you find a bunch of different settings. You can set your areas for user one and two. You can set console brightness, encoder fader brightness. Uh, there's uh, early 21, there's coming up an option, an auto dim option. So that if your environment gets lighter, the console will get lighter. If house lights are going down on top of the show, your console will dim down as well automatically. The limits for this can be set on those settings as well. For all kind of logic operation uh, user button areas, you have settings for user buttons, for GPIO functionality, for instance, to use your main queue buttons like queue go and queue previous to be operated with buttons in the armrest or foot switch, however you pre prefer to run it. Uh, also channel controls like fader start, sidechain GPI and other stuff can be assigned in these settings per project or also settings for the system which are then set global and not need to be saved with the project individually. To handle your projects, there's a menu save load. You get a list of existing projects. You can select one and just by hitting load, it will be loaded into the system. You also can type in a name And there's an auto filter, so when you start typing a name, it will show you all projects which already contains this in a name. And either you go on typing another name, and then you say save, and the project is saved to a hard drive or by typing or selecting a project. You have a long press function on an override button, so then you also can update a project. All user files are saved on an SSD hard drive on the central card on the DSP engine. From Avatos, this SSD card can be mounted as a network drive. It's a Zamba mount uh, to your computer environment and it shows up as a Zamba drive. So you can back up, copy, paste, whatever you want to do with your projects, rearrange your folder structure and things like that. I hope I could give you a nice overview, a helpful overview of the Avatus console and uh, feel free to contact any of our salespeople to get more detailed information on on-site presentations.